You know, in the spiritual journey, people talk about being present. That's a lovely word. But at this point, it kind of becomes a very overstated buzzword. We have to de- deconstruct or unpack it. There's what I think is an even more poignant word that is the activity of presence. Not are you present or not? Because often if you're asking yourself that question, you're in your head and you're not in the present moment. So what's the activity of presence? It's one delicious, clarifying word. It's called interest. Interest. If you want, if you're in a relationship, and the relationship, like I said, is family, friends, or beloveds, neighbors, coworkers, whatever, you decide where the light needs to go. But if the question is, how present are you with your relationships? Here's the question. How interested are you in the experiences of those people? Are you only interested in the subject matters that personally interest you? Or whether they're interested in something that doesn't quite jive with you, are you interested in watching someone you love express what they're passionate about? How interested are you in being a part of another person's passion? How delicious of a question is that? How interested are you in being a part of another person's passion? And how many of us want people to ask us questions to take a greater interest in us? Are we the people that take a greater interest in those we yearn to be validated by? And one of the things that makes it so difficult is God forbid you have people in your family that are not quite as hopped up on the spiritual path as you are. And if the spiritual path is an extension of your ego structure, you will think the people that don't take an interest in my spiritual path must not be interested in me. The people that are not interested in your spiritual path have the potential to be interested in your personal life. And if your spiritual path is a replacement for your personal life, that imbalance will make you think someone doesn't care about you. So I say, have spiritual aspirations, have personal interests to give everyone an equal opportunity to share in your passion. On a personal level, I enjoy cooking. I watch the Food Network. I love music, documentaries, professional wrestling, and UFC. (laughs) And someone who may not give a crap about my spiritual path and my offerings to this planet can talk to me about so many other things. And I am someone who naturally is interested in whatever people are passionate about. And if it's something I know the least about, the more interested I become. When you are an awake being, you are thankful that you have people in your life to whom you can be interested in their passions. They are the ocean, and you are the observer, and you are thankful that you have the opportunity to ride waves of passion in their world of interest. And when two come together in sacred communion, they don't have to be similar on any level, but only have the common interests of being mutually interested in sharing in the passions of the one they love. And so many times, I remember I had a dialogue once and I was talking with a woman who was married to a man who didn't have a spiritual aspiration bone in his body. (laughs) And her complaint was, he never asks me about my meditation. And I asked her a funny question. I said, did you ask him who won the game? (laughs) 
She says, oh, I'm not into that. <laughs> well, in his mind, you're not into him. Just like in her mind, him not asking about the meditation means he's not into her. If you're an awake being, you don't let the fact that you may not give a shit about a subject matter to keep you from being interested in someone's passion. You don't care about organized sports? Besides the point. Someone you love is. Honey, who won? What was your favorite play? What was the best moment of the game? Even if you're with someone who is happy when a rival loses, and that makes you feel like that is the most unconscious thing in the world. <laughs> Honey, did the enemies lose? How many players did we injure? <laughs> but honey, did we injure them to the degree where they're unable to even work in, in the NFL ever again? <laughs> I'm joking, but you see what I'm saying? You actually step into someone else's world and say, I'd like to be a part of your passion. You don't have to be passionate about what they're passionate about. You just have to say, I want to be a part of your passion. Because one of the tenets of consciousness is answering the question, how openly do you give to those you love? Now, if you are firing on all cylinders, the question becomes, how openly do you give, period? But the problem with that question is that most of us who are spiritually waking up but still have a lot of emotional density work too hard to be all things to all people. So I don't want you right now on day two to look any further than the people that matter most to you. Master this with people who matter most and then we'll broaden it over time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? A lot of us go, I'm gonna be unconditionally loving to every single human being in existence. Well, <laughs> let's just pump the brakes on that a little bit. Right? There's a play called life. We all get to decide which character we're going to play. And the overzealous spiritual being goes, hmm, I can be anyone. I know. I'm going to be Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm going to be Mother Teresa. How about just fully present with your partner? Can we start there? Maybe step number one isn't the liberator of all beings. Maybe just a deeper interest in your partner's aspirations. I don't mean to put her on the spot, but you know one of the things I love about my wife? I can't myself, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so one of the things I love to watch is UFC or professional wrestling. And one of the things my wife likes to do in her own downtime is read a book on a Kindle. And when I'm watching wrestling, and she comes down and joins me, and we talk about the wrestling for a second, but she's just reading her book, and she just wants to be in the same space with me. That blasts my heart open. It means the world to me. That, for me, is a moment of intimacy. That we get to enjoy ourselves together. Thank you. How openly do you give to those you love? And that doesn't mean that you don't have the right to have your own personal downtime. You should. You should have your own personal downtime. I'm just saying when it's time to be with your partner or your family or people that you choose to be around, right? I'm not saying the family you think you have to be around or the family you feel guilty if you're not around them, right? A few of that going on. I'm defining your inner circle. Let's, let's create a phrase, inner circle. 
Inner circle are the people you want to be around. People you want to be around. I'm not saying have no downtime and always be in their field. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when it's time to be around the people you want to be around, how openly do you give? And what are we giving? The gift of interest. That's what presence is, interest. What is a short attention span? I don't know how to be interested for long periods of time. Most people in the world don't know how to be interested in others for longer periods of time, and they go back to their own self-interest. They step out for a second, oh my God, nothing you're saying is feeding me, (laughs) bye-bye. You ever had a conversation, someone asks you a question, and you start to talk, and they go, oh my God, that reminds me of something else, back to you. Back to you, that's so cool. A short attention span means I have been trained to be more interested in my own self-interest and don't know how to be equally interested in others. Presence is when we are equally interested in ourselves as we are in others. That's balance. And even when your partner has something to share with you and you're not quite in that space, presence will say, you can say to your partner, honey, I would love to hear everything you have to say. I'm not quite in that space. Can we talk about this later? Do you know what we call that? Something I never had as a child. I was never given this. It's called a boundary. I was never given a boundary. And I was trained by my parents, God bless them, mostly my mother, God rest her soul, that to be loved is to be smothered. I was never given boundaries. So I never knew the benefit of that. I never knew how to stop and go, am I actually in a space where I'm the most ready, willing, and able to receive what someone needs to share with me? I never gave, I never gave myself the right to consider that. It was always, someone needs me. My feelings don't matter. So when we're in a really conscious relationship, you're able to have time for yourself, and when it's time to be with your partner, you can totally be together. They're interested in you, you're interested in them for the time you are dedicating to one another. You both have time to do your own thing and you have time to come together, merge together, and to lose yourself in a moment that will only return you back to yourself more whole and aligned than ever before. 